Greetings everyone, here's Ludwig again, and this is a game war in the Pacific Hetman's Edition. This is my play by email match against Asuwop. Or better to say, this is this uh, video I will make uh, to introduce a uh, new uh, scenario. This is scenario 50 on game version 26 Beastle uh, with the extended map. This scenario is simply built on this. Uh, bigger map and uh, it is a mod so it has some mm, I don't would say heavy modification but it's uh, it's not a historical mod let's say this at the end this mod is more or less like if the Japanese Navy had a better understanding of what will happen in the next war and could more or less um, focus on some stuff more and choose better equipment. Uh, it's not totally unrealistic, it's all possible, but it's also, um, it's more or less is going in with uh, more investment of money, let's say this. So this mod will give the Japanese Navy, mainly for the Navy, Better equipment, some better ships. This is all. Also, the air force is at the end uh, on a higher level. Better training for pilots. More pilots will come in. The industry is uh, built up a little more, but this is slightly. But the, on the other side, Japan also starts with less resources, supplies, and so on. So you could simply say. The punching power of the Japanese Navy and Air Fleet is stronger, but the time to be successful is shorter. That is, I think, more or less to make this uh, mod the description very short. The Japanese Army and Army Air Force also is improved, but slightly only. So it is really more focusedly. This is like Yamanaka, Yamamoto was able to do exactly what he wants. No one interfere. He don't must compromise. Something like this. That is the idea. Let's say this. And uh, yeah, so you will see. Yeah, let's say this. The problem is now that this game also try at the same time to balance out some of the weapons that Japanese use. In the original stock game, there's a compromise, because if you play Japan with exactly what Japan had in reality, and everything would be like in reality, there was no chance that Japan can win. So the game give some equipment better chance to hit or whatever to do, or do more damage or something like this. And in this game, it is a little scaled back, at least at some part. You can mostly see this, I think, on destroyers. You, this is your typical destroyer, Kagairo class destroyer. And uh, if you see this, you realize immediately that this 5 inch guns, 12.7 7, uh, centimeter guns, often, not all, but most of them are surface guns only. They are not more dual purpose guns. That will drop, of course, the anti aircraft firepower of the sea destroyers drastically. This is one big change of the game. You have some 12.7 centimeter guns at world purpose, but most of them are not. So, in short, you can also say, like, in f up to end of 42, the average anti aircraft firepower of Japanese ships is uh, lower than scenario one. In, but in 43, this will start to flip and change. And in the long run, it is better, let's say this. Because if you, s this is your standard Kagero class, you don't have any anti-aircraft equipment here, only very short range uh, self-defense fire equipment. So this destroyer will not provide any anti-aircraft firepower for the task force, only for its own ship. So if I upgrade this ship, 
nothing really will change here directly drastically it looks still similar like the stock game but we are here in july 42 okay if i make the next upgrade we enter 42 we get already radar we get the type 2 depth drivers this is already better let's say this a slightly improvement that end of 42 you have already radar technology and the best anti-submarine equipment now you can see in end of 43 there is a complete change of the setup the japanese navy realized in this mod that these guns are nice to have and they are good for surface engagement but they will not give you any anti-aircraft firepower so they kick them the two rear uh, turrets are kicked out and replaced by 10 cm dual purpose guns. These are the best Japanese anti aircraft long range uh, guns and they are really good, but of course, they have uh, not the penetration power and the damage power. I mean, it's a 10 cm against 12.7 cm. This is more or less 4 inch and this is 5 inch. But you will give this ship now uh, anti-aircraft firepower, what is uh, nice. And you can see in, uh, there's an, one more upgrade coming. But this will give you only uh, more 25 centimeter guns. But you can also see that uh, in October you get already both radar sets. So you have air and surface radar. So I don't see it is worse i would still say this is better anti-aircraft equipment overall this is better because this gun simply can shoot more far away they have better anti-aircraft uh, capabilities so they can really down an enemy aircraft and you can still use them for an surface engagement but don't ask me how many shells of this 10 centimeter you need to sink one enemy destroyer and the big, the last change is only that you change to the better type 13 radar. This is a little late for this destroyer, but it's okay. So this is only one type. That is for destroyers have a big impact on this. We can also check something else, like uh, the standard here Congo class um, battle cruiser. Of course, the game always calls them battleships, but I call them battle cruisers. That is, I think, similar to what the game has. This is a standard setup. But you can also see that the time is changing. It's much earlier here, the upgrades. Everything is earlier and often better. Here you can already realize that the game, if we go back, here you have your standard 12.7 dual purpose guns, four, so two twins each side. The upgrade will change this to uh, three twins each side and 10 centimeter. That is one upgrade and then you can see the rest is not so more. But this is the one big issue, the 10 centimeter. The Japanese Navy is relying heavily on 10 centimeter uh, anti-flag. This is simply better and stronger, <coughs> in the long run at least. Uh, this is one stuff. You also have more destroyers, I would say. I really don't count them so much, but uh, I think Japan starts at least with much more of uh, the anti-aircraft destroyers, flak destroyers or whatever you want to call them. This is his purpose-built uh, destroyers, they are really providing anti-aircraft firepower for the fleet, for the task force, and they are also good sub-hunters. Not with the original configuration, but soon already. You can see it already in August 42. I get ra air radar. I have the type 2 depth charges, and uh, yeah, the rest is the same. I need to wait a little longer to also see uh, surface uh, radar. But okay. So you have more of this uh, destroyers. Um, that is good. There's also a change to the light cruisers. Maybe I can use this uh, screen better. You, and maybe I can show also the uh, the build up. Um, I guess there's not really a change in what you get here in carriers. There were still one, two, three, four, five, six fleet carriers and three escort carriers. What is different is the setup of the carriers. 
this is not the typical six heavy uh, free carriers and uh, the light carriers and escort carriers are somewhere else. In this scenario, the Japanese did what they want to do, but they never had time to do it because they want to do it after midway. At least I read about this. They changing the setup of the carriers to divisions of uh, two plus one. Uh, they have always two free carriers and one support carrier. And then you have three divisions. So one division is not more two free carriers. Now it's one division, two plus one. So you have all, yeah, that is one change. Also one change is, but this is minor, is Akaga is in this case 75 and uh, Kaga is uh, 81. So you, so you can see that, uh, I think the 81 is 81 is the same. But the 72 is not more than 72, now the standard size of a Japanese carrier is 75. Or oh, mm, small change, but not super important. But you can also see that Akagi started with a standard setup, nothing crazy. But you can already in July, you see, okay, we, we, we understand we need anti-aircraft guns and not uh, anything else. So, and we need anti-aircraft guns can do something. So give me 10 centimeter. The numbers are still a little small, but okay. But you, I think this will never change, so you have uh, 8 per side, so 4 twins. And then you get a lot of 25mm. So this is not changing. But you get radar earlier, and you get 10cm a lot. Good. Uh, so that's so far for carriers. Not much more to say here. Of course the equipment is a little slightly different. Uh, I could now explain everything about this stuff, but uh, I think it doesn't matter. What is a change is you can see here you start only with two escort carriers and I think you can only build two more escort carriers out of the normal shipyard. But the game allow you to convert uh, APs to escort carriers. I think four or six, something like this. Uh, not really any change to the battleships, not on the map. Let's skip this. What is changing at the heavy cruisers is... I think they kick some ships out, but I'm not more so sure. But there's a slight change of the heavy cruisers uh, you have here. This is the uh, 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 Furutaka class. This is, I think, more or less the first uh, heavy cruisers. I think they also changed something with the tonnage. I think they, they're using standard load and not fully load tonnage, but okay. Um, but you can also hear roughly firepower of anti-aircraft stuff. Um, so far I know there was a change to the light cruisers. You can see there are other type of light cruisers. There's not more this... Uh, Yubari is still here. Yubari is still Yubari, okay. But uh, other light cruisers have uh, some change. But they only slightly change. If they're really better, I don't want to say too much about this, but there's a light change of the light cruiser setup. But still minor. Destroyers, you have here now more. You can see you start with one, two, three, four of this. Four is not much, but at least you start with something. You don't must build them from, you just start to build them. So you have already some on the map. And uh, you have a lot of first class, I think you have really a little more first class destroyers. Then you have still a bunch of these second class destroyers, they're all uh, around 4000 range. They, they, I mean I call them for second class but they are normally still first class. This is Fubu key class, so they are normally okay, they only really don't have the range sometimes. So they are good for, to intercept the enemy, but they are not for long range operations. But you can see here again, no real anti-aircraft firepower. There is something smaller, Not I first time realized it, but now I did. Uh, it's a change of speed. Not on the max speed so much, but on the cruise speed. If I check this standard destroyer, one big change is here. The cruise speed is now 5. Before, in the standard stock scenario, there are not really many ships can go so high cruise speed. I cannot even remember any Japanese ship can do this. 
But now with this uh, setting, you have a lot of, sh not many ships, but some ships, they can run five cruise speed and not even four. This allows you simply, without burning too much fuel to uh, hunt for ships uh, faster, let's say this. You must check them, I don't know how, the most destroyers cannot do this, but some they can do it and uh, keep an eye on it. I want it. So the carriers are also, you can see here, this is four, four, and then you have Hiryu, Soryu, Shukaku, and Suikaku. They have always have high speed. Akagi and Kaga are older ships, so they have uh, not the speed. And the light cruisers, I don't know, they can only four, oh. but this light cruiser can five. So you must find the right combination to use your ships at the best, and remember that the slowest ship is always a limitation of the task force, so it makes no sense to put uh, 10, five cruise speed ships together and then put add one more with four. Yeah. I think this is important because this is really allows you to move your ships uh, faster around the map. Good. Um, roughly speaking, APs are not more so important, I would say. The whole Minkanze Kamikaze stuff is not working in this map. In the normal scenario one, you won't find all Minkanze and Kamikazes and uh, convert them to APD because then you can get already in summer for the two Radar 13. That is not working. Um, What is here? I think the 21s are all the same. Yeah. So you can see all the 21s, they're ready to convert in June 42 to a escort carrier. So I guess you have here now one, two, three, four, five ships you can convert. This one cannot convert now. Good. Uh, submarines. I guess they are less. But I'm not one of us who I don't count them. But uh, the focus is not too much on su uh, submarines, I would say, in this mod. Good. So much for the navy. Let's say I mean I mean I only want to explain the difference to the mod. Um, you have less resources and oil and fuel overall. But I cannot really show this now here on the map. Uh, what I can maybe show. Uh, it's not possible here. I do this if I start my turn, but the uh, ship availability is also different. Um, totally different, even. But I cannot really discuss it here. Maybe I will make another video about this. Uh, then I must load another scenario. Good. Uh, what else is different? The big change. Because this is other map, let's say this. This map had the other road setting. I'm not sure. I think this is not really related so much to the mod. I don't know. Could be a part of the mod, but I think this is uh, this extended map layout. So you have other road network. You can see, especially in China, it's totally different. I think the rail is more or less the same. There's no difference. No. Uh, there's some small changes to the bases, but not too much. I would say this is rather simple. What is different is the layout of army units. If you know how the army units are on the map uh, in scenario one, in this mod it's different. There are some small diff, um, some are small and minor, and some are really heavy. The most heavy, I mean. Let's say this. Normally, uh, for Moza, you have, I think, two or three uh, paratrooper units you can let jump on uh, Luzon. They are not more here in Formosa. The paratroopers are now in a new style of formation. Now they are not more this brigades or whatever they are. Now they call them uh, regiments. So you have, uh, I think, they are a little stronger. This one is not so much stronger. This is a standard regiment. So they are here now at uh, North Vietnam, Hanoi. 
And then you have also a paratrooper division, I think is here. Yeah, so this is a whole division, much more focused, concentrate firepower. The equipment is more or less the same. It's really only that you don't have more three or four or five, six. You have now two or three, something like this. But they're stronger. You can still divide this unit to subunits, and then you have ex more or less the same what you had before. Let's say this. But the starting location is a different, and this will give you simply other options. Uh, and other units are also on other locations at the start. Also, what is different is uh, Carrier Division 3. Here you saw you, Shoho, are here in the source. So not all, there. Yeah, you have still six carriers ready, prepare for the Pearl Harbor strike. But these are four fleet carriers plus two support carriers, not more six fleet carriers. You have also, of course, the magic uh, task force stuff here. So if you really want, I think you can get much more carriers on Pearl Harbor. Uh, so this is, I think, a change to the equipment. The rest is more or less the same because you can see here the map of Malaya is also a little different. <clears throat> There's also a change to Palm Bang. Uh, <coughs> you can see here so now only the refineries are not more 1,020. Now they are only 750. So they are missing roughly 300 refineries. I think part is here now. No, here. Because now this was before 300 to 300. Now it's 300 to 400. So 100 are here. I don't know if there is where is the rest. I don't really check all the bases, but f at least here is less in Palm Bank, and here is more in Bali Papan. But I check the other locations, they look similar, and I don't see any difference. But maybe the refineries here in Suabaya was, I don't know if there was 250 to 200 before. It could be that this was lower or lower, yeah. You also can see that some submarines are in other locations, if you are more or less the India Ocean Submarine Division, or two groups. Uh, the starting positions are making more sense, let's say this. If I really want to go for the British, of course I won't have some submarines already here to intercept incoming ships for Rangoon and not first uh, push them from Saigon uh, up the street. And also I won't have some submarines to block here Batavia and uh, Soabaya port. Makes sense all. So it's simply, yeah, if someone is really thinking it more carefully and no one uh, force you to do some stuff because, um, let's say, because of honor or because of uh, other guy don't like it or something like this. China itself is not really a big change, but the garrison is much more increased. Roughly speaking, I would say Japan need nearly double the garrison around the map. Some cities never or don't really change, but uh, I think Shanghai is uh, 720 also in the stock game. I just think there's no game change. This is not a change. Beijing, I think, is already changing from 350 to 450. Not a uh, big stuff, but uh, I really don't know. But you have many cities now asking for more at least here in the source at around Shanghai, I remember this. I think this was maybe 60. This is maybe no change, but 40 maybe it's also the same. 40 maybe still the same here between it's high 100, 150. That is for sure more. 40, 40. This is for so you have some bases they really ask for more. And uh, I think also Canton asked for more, 400. I think before it's only 300 or something like this. 80, maybe. So at least you're also taking the cities. You can check this here. Oh, if I can find it. Now Garrison 350. Garrison 150. Garrison 75. Garrison 200. So maybe not so much to the, what you control now, but what you will take in the future is that garrison are really higher. At least I would say, roughly speaking, double. 
even more. This, I think, is normally 20. Now it's 140. Cyan is, I think, 80. Now it's 200, something like this. So you can see this is, I think, uh, to slow down the Japanese steamrolling approach if you know what you're doing. On top, on top, this is also the stock game. You can see here SL, so this is, I think, supply limitation. Oh, I don't know. Every base, not only a base, have a garrison request, if it's ever garrison request, but every hex have now a maximum limitation. Before you had only some hexes like islands or swamp or something like this, there was limitation. Now every hex have a limitation. And that can be, like in the deep mountains here, only 40,000. Uh, if I'm here without anything, then it's only 35,000. But I went, I think 35,000 is already the lower end. 40,000 is roughly speaking. But here, only 25,000, I don't know why. But this is high mountains, I think. But why, I mean, this is 30,000 and the base is only 25,000, I don't know. I think normally you cannot... Anyway, so this is also a change in this mod. But, but you can play this mod without stocking limit. But uh, Rob my opponent I think he only played stock uh, I mean um, stacking limit uh, games and I say okay I can try it I I make some calculations I think it's okay you can make still 2000 attack value armies more or less but you cannot go much higher so you cannot make 5,000 or 10,000, that is really not working. But it's also not really necessary. You must only uh, understand this at the beginning of the game. So, so much to China, so there is a change of garrison in China, that for sure. Uh, there are some ships change, uh, and uh, the, the big other part, uh, the army itself is not too much change, so if it belongs to the army, and most of the land units are army units, then they don't have really a change. You have also a change of uh, radar equipment and uh, flag guns. Of, yeah, That is maybe different. You have now many of the 75 millimeter uh, flag guns. Uh, much better than 25 millimeter, let's say this. And you can later change them to, I don't know if this is a German 8.8 or this is a Japanese 8.8. I read about, I think this is maybe the Japanese also had 88, but I think this is German 88, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so much for this. The uh, the rest I think I will explain maybe in the campaign. So the other change, and this is a more heavy change, is to air units. Because it's a navy, you have more aircraft or other aircraft. Some aircrafts are kicked out, other are re uh, replacing them. And the upgrade pass is also different. More or less, the Japanese navy focus more on zeros, but they also early on split the zero in two subtypes carrier and not carrier units you start with the standard zero this is a standard zero you start so this is a normal airframe i think there's no really a change to it but early on you have already the the a the m3 that is also what the game have i mean the normal game has the m3 but the date is a little changed here you start already in february 42 but this is a land based carrier uh, zero so they have other value, other setup, and uh, other armament. So more or less, you change from the M2, you will go directly to the M5, what is still a carrier plane. Then you go from M5, I think, to M5B, is also a carrier plane. And then from the M5B, you go directly to the M8. There's no more this C subdivision. And uh, I think the A, the M, the three, M, the M three B, what was normally a carrier type in the original game is also now a land craft. 
So this is now the upgrade from the normal M3. So now you have the, M, the B edition, then you change to the 4. It's also all land based. Then from 4 you go to the G. And G more means more or less always uh, land based. But why they don't start before with this G, I don't know. Maybe there's some historical reason. So 4G, and then at the end you have the 8G. That is one point, and they are all uh, in the upgrade pass. So you can feed, the, if you know how to make the air and d you can get all this aircraft uh, reasonably fast and uh, have some aircraft is powerful enough for even 43, I would say. You also have here now this M2, M3, that is like the normal game. The game gives you also the G edition. I don't know. This M3 is normally now a carrier capable aircraft, so you can upgrade the M2 to M3. Okay, a little better than the M2. And you have now this uh, purely land based aircraft. But I think this is also what the game has, the normal game. Um, then you can see here some upgrades. You can see the Grays have also upgraded from A2 to M3, A3. Uh, the big difference is here armor. So the M3, the A3, or the Grace 2, get armor plate. It's a little faster. Um, and can still carry a torpedo. Let's say this. The distance, I think, is shorter. So you only have a range of 9, and the A2 have a range of 10. So, but still, I would say that is acceptable. Give the pilot armor and get a higher top speed. Is okay for one hex less range. What is, uh, and then you have here some other stuff with additional stuff or not additional. You can see the same with the dive bomber. Before, normally the edition 4 was end, uh, now you have the option to go to the edition number 5. This one gives you more speed and protection, but you can only carry 500 kilogram bombs, not more 800 kilogram bombs. You can go with a classic uh, 4, less speed, no protection, but you can carry 800 kilo. Up to the player. It's an option. You don't must do a Google for it. There's also this uh, uh, Nell Q aircraft. That is more or less a special sub hunter uh, equipment. You get radar and. Uh, MAD, Magnetic uh, Anomaly uh, Detector, so it means more or less it detects uh, the magnetic field of the submarine uh, under surface and then it will drop the bombs automatically. Because a normal M3 cannot do this, but I think they, no, this can also not do this. So it's nice to have. The, also the M4, I think uh, the Jabetti is now better, but yeah, let's say better. There are some changes. The Japanese also can get now the G8. That was never finished this project in real life, but it was possible. So this is a Japanese four engine bomber. It's a yeah, B17 copy, I would say, more or less. Maybe even a little tough, but you get 20 millimeter, so... Yeah. Uh, there's other changes to this, uh, but uh, there are not too many real big changes. There are zero stuff, as I think, one big change. I also think that the Tony is a big change, because the Tony, the Key 100, I really like to use it, and in the real life it was a good airframe. But it was simply not possible to use it in scenario one. It makes no sense. But in this mod, they change the values, and now you have a decent good uh, aircraft with enough top speed and firepower and range and maneuver values in high altitude. This is high altitude. You can also go for the key one. That is a better for lower altitude. But yeah, it's mainly the main use is high altitude. 
And uh, other stuff is changing, but uh, Oscar no change, Tojo no change. You have now not only three nicks, now you have, I think, five nicks. I think before it was C over, now you have a D and the E edition, but these are Night Fighters. But maybe they're okay. And uh, Helen stuff is the same, this is all the same, all the same. Frank is the same. Uh, George, oh yeah, yeah, this is the other big change. The Japanese also realized the limitation of the zero. The, you, it's a light built aircraft, let's say this. The George is a heavy built aircraft. In scenario one, you can have the George, or everyone like to have the George, but it's a purely land based aircraft. Cannot change this. You must go to A7, to SAM, to get an upgraded carrier aircraft. You can still do this here, but the Japanese also invested money and resources or development time to get the George carrier ready. So you can see here the G, G, G. So the Gs are all land-based. 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 Oh no, this one is carrier cable, but I don't know why then they are G. Maybe this G means something else. The A is carrier, but this is not more G, so I think maybe they missed here the G, maybe this, it's not a G, I don't know. But this one is a G again, you cannot use from carrier. But at the end, most important is, you can now use the George for carrier-based operation. And because this is a, this is the first carrier-based ready George, and it's earlier than 45, so, and the service rank, ranking is 2. So, from my point of view, I would say, I don't really need a SEM if I can get this George. Because, for carrier operations, that is enough. Armament, speed, 20 millimeter cannons, what I want more. And I can use them for, uh, 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 fighter bomber because this can carry uh, 250 kilogram bombs, two of them. You can even upgrade this one, uh, but I don't know if it's really better. You, the values are a little different, but it's not a big change, let's see this. If I compare this uh, to the SEM, what is here? SEM 3. SEM 3 is still a little faster, I think you have your more firepower because you have six 20 millimeter cannons. You can also carry the bombs. So the aircraft is still better, but the George is not not f too far away from it. And you normally want the George anyway, so why not try to focus on George? That was, I think, more or less a big change. And there's also this aircraft. Uh, but I don't know if it's really much better. This is also a Navy land-based twin-engine torpedo bomber. I think the big difference here is the range. You get more range. Well, yeah, that is more or less all. There's also some other smaller changes uh, to the setting, but this is uh, most important, I would say. Good. So, uh, that is, I think, the big change of this uh, mod. So, you have a lot of change to flag weapons, you have change of electronic equipment, the Japanese are better. Better flag, better electronic equipment, and I would say better air force. Also, more and better ships are under construction. On the downside, you have in 42, no, more, many of your ships have nearly no flag at all. So that is not so good. And you start with even more pressure to be successful in your conquest. Hmm. If you like this mod, I don't know. It is something else. It is not too far away. It's not the totally science fiction stuff. It's all possible, let's say this. Uh, we will see. So I play Asu, Rob, uh, the same guy playing now already. Sagoon and Sagoon also use exactly the same mod. So, Sagoon use the mod, I use the mod. 
Uh, I never played the mod, but I know the game and I simply only must understand some other numbers and uh, keep in mind that some stuff is different and then I normally can adopt to it very quickly. And if I'm more successful than Sagoon, I don't know, we will see, you can compare it uh, and then let's have fun and, yeah. Uh, fun and success is always important. I think not much more I can discuss about this. I think the Allies, ah yeah. This was all now Japan. For the Americans or the Allies, I think there are some, they're getting more ships and some some ship location is changing, something like this. Uh, I know that in the battleships are different in Pearl Harbor and uh, they have, I think, some more light carriers somewhere on the map. And there's, I think, one big change. That is this training basis off map. More or less here, I think, are air wings, fighter wings, bomber wings, whatever. Here are more or less air wings. And the allied player can buy them out. But you more or less only, you can buy the, the airframes out. The air wing, you will be dispense the air wing. Or, and then you can get the, the airframes. So you can more or less buy here additional B-17s, B-24s uh, and whatever is possible. I don't know how exactly is this working but I read about this so that the LS player can pay political points to get special airframes early on. But it's not a limitless and it costs points at the end. And you get only the airframes but not the pilots so you still must train your pilots. Good. But this will, uh, this allows, I think, the allies to have early on maybe better airframes somewhere on the map, but not everywhere on the map. Good. Then see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.